I'm Scott Lucas. This is today's EA Worldview on Syria. How the world's journalist fell for a Russian propaganda campaign about chemical weapons. Today there is yet another article by a journalist named Gareth Porter about how it must be insurgents who carried out last August chemical weapons attacks near Damascus that killed hundreds of civilians. Porter says the insurgents could have made the homemade rockets. They could have manufactured all those leaders of sarin. They could have worked with Turkey and with others to carry out these attacks and blame them on the Assad regime, thus justifying Western military intervention. Porter's article follows similar claims by an investigative journalist named Seymour Hirsch, published in the London Review of Books earlier this month, and by websites such as the Hukuta website, who have spread the information since last autumn that there is no way that the Assad regime could have carried out those pinpoint attacks on East Ghouta and West Ghouta, two areas near the capital. Let's step back a minute. Let me tell you a story about what happened in the days after the August 21st attacks, a story that links up months later to all these articles. In Moscow, Russian policymakers faced a serious problem. They have backed the Assad regime for years during the uprising. They have given it significant military assistance. They have poured in economic aid. They have given that regime political cover. Yet now they face the prospect that the Assad regime would be culpable for a war crime. They face the prospect that they could not hold back United Nations action condemning the Assad regime. And they face the prospect of military intervention to protect civilians and punish Assad. So the Russians hit back. Within days, they put out a series of propaganda lines, including, and this may now sound familiar to you, these points. These were homemade rockets, homemade rockets that insurgents could make. The Assad regime may not, therefore, have carried out attacks. The Russians said, the insurgents have manufactured sarin. They have been caught with sarin in Turkey, so therefore, they must be the ones who carried out this attack and earlier attacks for example, in Aleppo province in March of 2013. The Russians put out the line that the insurgents were backed by others, such as Saudi Arabia and Turkey. So how could the world rule out the possibility that others had contributed expertise to the attacks? A couple of points. Point one. The attacks that took place on August 21st were not with homemade weapons. Some of the weapons are called volcano rockets. These rockets are modified rockets. They're not ones that you see in every country's conventional arsenal, but they are rockets held by the Syrian government. But more importantly, what you will never hear from the Russian propagandist, from the Syrian propagandist, or from the journalist who have repeated that propaganda, is that the attacks in West Ghouta were carried out with weapons which are Soviet-made weapons. Weapons, rockets, that have been manufactured since the 1960s. There is no evidence at any point that insurgents could have gotten hold of these Soviet-made rockets, but there is significant evidence that they are weapons that are in the armory of the Syrian regime. Point two. These were multiple attacks with multiple rockets. Hirsch, Porter, and others have to show how the insurgents carried out not only one attack, but many attacks on August 21st. Attacks that killed not a few civilians, but hundreds. There is only one group that has the multiple rockets, and that is the Syrian regime. Point three, the sarin. There is an attempt to claim that insurgents hold vast quantities of sarin, or at least enough to carry out the attacks. That evidence is distorted. There was a trial in Turkey last spring that tried insurgents for holding sarin, but it did not reach the conclusion that they had chemical weapons. Instead, they may have had components that were used, for example, for antifreeze, which is far different. I think Porter knows that this morning. I think he knows he's on shaky ground because he then carries out another line which goes even beyond the Russian propaganda. He says, maybe hundreds of civilians didn't die. Maybe all that evidence we had from witnesses, from local hospitals, from doctors, of mass casualties, in some estimates close to 2,000 now, maybe 
that was a distortion. That's how far his piece goes to try to rewrite history, a very important history. But back to our original point, Russian propaganda has won. With each article that comes out from a supposedly reputed journalist repeating the misinformation, disinformation, and distortion, we get further and further away from the truth of what happened last August for a clear political motive. Assad cannot be blamed for what happened, for if he is blamed, then the world has to take action to stop yet another chemical weapons attack, even as the Syrian regime over the course of the last month has been using chlorine to injure hundreds of civilians to kill at least three of them in attacks in the northwest and in the south of the country. There was a German gentleman, James Joseph Goebbels, who said in the 1930s, if you repeat a lie often enough, people will believe it. I think the Russian campaign is effective testimony to this. For not only will you get people to believe it, some of those people will be journalists who will do your work for you. I'm Scott Lucas, and this is today's EA Worldview on Syria.